First of all, good morning, everybody. Welcome to uh, the Genesis XBT second day. Um, my name is Jose. I'm the CEO and founder of IBEX. Uh, we're a lightning infrastructure company. And uh, I'm here to talk to you to, today about the remittance revolution. Um, and I like to start with a little story. So it's 1872 and the world is about to change. Most people don't know it yet, but a telegraph company, Western Union in this case, has just launched a new service where they're allowing their customers to send money from anywhere uh, in the U.S. where they're where there's a Western Union franchise or office to anywhere else in country. They're leveraging their technology, their telegraph technology, and they're also uh, leveraging the fact that everybody's depositing money all over the country. This makes their operations really efficient because they want their money in the cities where people are usually sending money out to. And so they disimburse the money where the uh, customers are, uh, where the money is being sent. They have a lot of cash that it takes a lot of money to get back to the cities they have their main offices. In. At this point in time, all money movements are by stagecoach, which is really inefficient. And they're saying, I can just pay back this money to other people in, in the cities where I don't need the money, and I keep the money in New York or San Francisco or where they really want to have it. And this is how Wire is born. This is the first first national money transfer, but then they exported this internationally. Now, that's 1872. In 150 years, this technology hasn't fundamentally changed. It works the same way. Up till the mid-1950s, 1960s, it still was via telegraph or telex. And the format largely unchanged. I think it's time for a change. And so, what happens? There's emergence of new technologies. But new technologies, transformative technologies, they require us, they have a couple of, uh, of uh, characteristics. First, they take a long time to get adopted Second, once they're finally adopted, they do spread like wildfire. We are seeing this with the telephone, we've seen this with the internet, we've seen this with the automobile. It is always the same playbook. And why is this? Well, first of all, it challenges our world's view. It challenges the image we have of the world and it requires us to change and to think in a new way. And especially if you're in the industry that's about to change, that's really hard. Because now it's not only about changing your mindset, it's, it's changing the way you monetize. It's, it's changing the way you earn your livelihood. And so what happens is that most transformative technologies, they get a they get uh, developed by outsiders. They, take, they are usually not developed within the industry they're going to change. And what happens is the outsiders, they see a problem, a problem that needs to be solved, and they work at it, and they work at it a lot. And once it's solved, if the problem was worth solving, the solution proves workable, and then 
it spreads like wildfire. It moves almost immediately. And I believe that the technologies that we're working on right now, this is where we're at right now. We're still in the process of getting to that point where we've proven it, the problem has been solved and it was a problem worth, worth solving. Now what is the problem? What am I talking about here? Well, mostly it has to do with the movement of value globally. Right now, new technologies, you know, the internet, as the internet has, has improved our lives, it's changed dra dramatically the way we do commerce, it's changed dramatically the way we, uh, we need, deliver services and products. And, at his, and as it has done this, the value that needs to be transferred to pay for these products and services is decreasing because the internet, what this technology has fundamentally done is it's made everything we, we consume less expensive. But we're delivering now, we, we're in the process of needing to transfer less and less value because our products and services become micro products, micro services. And so what has happened is we've come up with all of these um, imperfect solutions. Now we have uh, weird monetization models to actually try to monetize these uh, products and services. And so we come up with things like the ad revenue model. We come up with things like the prepayment model. We come up with things like the subscription model, where you get subscription fatigue. And why are we doing all of this? We're doing it all because we can't transfer value at a small enough scale that we actually manage to pay for the products and services. And why can't we do this? Because our settlement technology is not good enough. These are global services, these are global products that need very small amounts of value transfer. And so we're in a conundrum where that technology no longer fits the growth and the scale of our communications technology and at its core transferring value, transferring money, it is another form of communication. And so we at IBEX, we work every day leveraging the Bitcoin protocol as a value transfer uh, technology. And I can tell you that for us, for a settlement technology, there's nothing like lightning absolutely nothing. But what it's doing, this technology is so transformative that it is requiring a change of mindset. It is bringing forward a, ch a paradigm change. Um, and <clears throat> what am I talking about here? Well, traditional global payments, global value transfer, how they operate is you want to group as big a payment as possible to send it out once, once per day, once per week, once per month. Then the bigger the payment, the better, the more efficient you're able to be. And Lightning actually works the opposite way. What we really like is small transactions. What we want to do is process each financial transaction as soon as we get it. So for example, if uh, let's say you buy uh, a laptop or a phone or, or a piece of technology or a candy on the street, what is ideal in our world in, with our technology is that that payment gets settled all the way to the supplier as soon as possible. 
so we don't wait on, on multiple payments and group them and send, to send them out. Now, I believe this change is going to be as profound as the change that happened when we went from batch instruction processing and computing to real-time processing, which was enabled by the microtransistor. And everything we do here today, like the video you're, going, you're seeing about me, uh, the internet, the video conferencing that what has gotten so, uh, so important over the last few years, this is all possible because of real-time instruction processing. And so today, we're slowly going to see the world migrate into real-time financial processing. And what is this going to do for us? We don't know but it's going to be as big as the leap from batch instruction processing and computing to real-time instruction processing and computing. And not only that, this is what's really needed to leverage a lot of new technologies that are coming online just recently. I'm speaking of AI, I'm speaking of uh, LLMs. So pretty soon, we're gonna need technology that's able to allow these large language models to communicate with, with each other, to allow these AI and bots and the internet of things to actually pay for services between them. And this is not possible with what we have right now. The only, because we want to be able to pay for computing cycles in real time. And the only way we can do this is with uh, the technology that is coming online right now with blockchain, specifically with Bitcoin. And we at, at IBEX, we believe firmly that is going to be lightning. Uh, over the last uh, couple of days, and today I believe we're also going to be hearing a lot about assets and uh, tokenization and the ability to deliver uh, securities and financial products using these same technologies. Well, those two, those uh, products, they will also need this ability to settle instantly. And I believe that those uh, uh, technologies are slowly going to gravitate also to the Bitcoin blockchain and Lightning specifically. And so I think we're living through very exciting times. I think uh, these technologies not only are going to be a nice to have, these are going to be a must have moving forward. And we're just at the start of this uh, change in the way we operate and conduct ourselves, uh, commercially speaking, globally. And we're starting to see changes happening in Latin America. I believe we're starting to see changes as well in, uh, in Africa. And I'm very excited for what's to come. So. Thank you very much.